Hi everyone, Eric at Retro Handheld Guides, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install Stardew Valley and other ports via Portmaster. Today's video features the Ambernic RG35XXH, and I'll be running the latest version of MuOS, which is version 11, nicknamed Beans. Portmaster is available for a number of Linux-based retro handhelds, including the RG35XXH and Plus, the Ambernic RG353 line of devices, the TrimUI Smart Pro, and a ton of others via custom firmwares, including MuOS, Newly, ArcOX, Rocknix, formerly Jealous, and others. The Portmaster games that I'll be showing in this video do require that you own a retail copy of the game via Steam, however, Portmaster also includes a number of ready-to-run games that can be played without additional files. So with that, let's find out how to install Sardew Valley and other ports via Portmaster on your favorite Portmaster-supported retro handheld device. Alright, so here we have the latest version of MuOS, nicknamed Beans. Now, the nice thing about Beans is that it already comes pre-installed with uh, Portmaster. So to access Portmaster, you simply scroll down until you find your applications, and then from there you'll see that Portmaster is your third option. So open that up, uh, just make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi. Obviously this does require internet connection, and the first thing it'll do is it'll go through a little update process. Uh, I've already done that this morning, so it's updated everything to the latest version. Now what you want to do to find uh, Stardew Valley is just go down to the all port section and from there this is alphabetical. You can see there's tons of options already in here. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly scroll using my right bumper down to the S's. And then from there you'll see that we have Stardew Valley is down here. And then all you need to do is click on your A button to show the info and from there you will install. Now it'll go through uh, the download process, it'll install everything that you need, and then once you're done, it'll also install the uh, various files that it needs, and then say installed successfully. And that's all you really need to do from this uh, side of Portmaster. The next thing that we need to do is we need to grab all of the retail files of the Stardew Valley from my Steam client, and upload those into the various ports on the uh, device here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to exit out of the uh, MuOS, uh, quickly shut down, and then I'm going to pop out my SD card from the bottom, and then I will take this SD card and put it into my Windows PC, and I am going to then uh, move the files that we need from my Steam client over to the ports on here, uh, and that's a pretty easy process. So we'll talk through that uh, in the next section. So when it comes to Portmaster games, uh, anything that's a retail game is going to require the retail files, and that's going to be different depending on the game. So the easiest way to figure out what kind of files that you're going to need is you're going to want to open up your browser and then browse to portmaster.games. Once at portmaster.games, you'll be able to go into the games section and see all of the various ports that are available for uh, the different devices here. So you can see they have quite a lot of ports that are available. Some of these are going to be ready to run, some of them are going to require retail files. So in the case of Stardew Valley, if we quickly type in Stardew Valley, we can see here that it is the first option. And by opening up that, all of the various games are going to tell you usually exactly what needs to be done. So here under our instructions, we need to get the compatibility of Stardew Valley, both Steam and GOG Works. And then from there, we will be able to move the files into the Stardew Valley game data folder. So how do we do that? Let's take a look at my Steam client here. So in Steam, I do have Stardew Valley already downloaded. In order to get the compatibility version, which is the one that we're going to need, you'll want to get uh, your Stardew Valley opened up and then click on the Manage icon. From the Manage icon, if we go down into Properties, we will be able to see that uh, we have a number of different options and what we want is the Betas option. Under betas, you want to ensure that you are participating in the beta for compatibility for 32-bit systems. This is the version of files that we're going to need to move to our OS or to our SD card. So once you click on that and then you go ahead and close it, it will download all of the compatibility version of the files. Once that download is complete, you'll see that compatibility version is the one that is now installed. So to get these files, again, once we're done, click on the manage and then go to manage and then browse local files. Under the Browse Local Files, it'll grab all the files that we need uh, right here. So what you want to do is just on my keyboard, I'm doing, going to do a quick Control A, grab all my files, right click, and then I'm going to copy these files. 
and then over on my um, other SD card that I have inserted into my system will go into the Mu OS. And from here, we're looking for the port section. Now, depending on the custom firmware you have installed, this may be in a different area on Mu OS. It's right in the port, right in the uh, root. From the things like Newly, um, Arc OS, etc., it will probably be under ROMs and then into a port section. But the ports folder is usually going to look the same. So once we go into the ports folder, we'll have subfolders for all the games we have installed. And for Stardew Valley, we will go into Stardew Valley. And it told us to drop those files into the game data folder. So if we go into game data and now we right click in here, I can go ahead and paste all my files. And that's pretty much it. Once it downloads all those files and moves them over to your SD card, you can eject this safely and then pop it back into your device and turn it on. And from there, Stardew Valley will start up. Now that we've moved all the retail files that we're going to need to play Stardew Valley, you can easily access your content back in Mu OS. So we'll go into our explore content. And from there, you'll see a port section. Under our ports, we'll go ahead and scroll down to Stardew Valley. And you simply click the A to start it up. Now keep in mind that this does take a long time to start up. Um, it was, it's loading up, it'll appear blank. Uh, there's no indication. Uh, the first time I actually ran this, I thought maybe I'd accidentally turned off the device or it froze, uh, but just be patient. It will start up eventually. Uh, and then once it starts up, you will be in Stardew Valley on the latest version of compatibility, which at this point I believe is 1.6.5. So this is the latest version of Stardew Valley that we have uh, from the Steam page. Uh, and then from there, uh, we will be able to play Stardew Valley. Um, but you can see it does take uh, quite a while to load up. Uh, but now that we are in, we are in. So we have Stardew Valley running on the RG35XXH. Uh, and the same process will work on uh, pretty much any compatible device. So the Plus, the H, um, and it is also, in fact, running on the uh, 28XX right now. So there you go, Stardew Valley. Not all Portmaster games are going to run with Windows files. Uh, so many of these Portmaster games are actually going to require the Linux files from your various versions of the games. So one of my other favorite games to play on this device is Shredder's Revenge. And Shredder's Revenge is an example of a game that requires the Linux version of the Steam client uh, data. So the installation process is going to be exactly the same. Find your Portmaster version of Shredder's Revenge. And then from there, we'll go ahead and we will uh, install that. And it'll download your Portmaster files. Uh, and this is just the basic files. And once it's done, you'll have to do the same thing. So I'm going to uh, exit out of this, pop out my SD card, and pop it back into the computer. And I'll show you how to download the Linux version of TMNT Shredder's Revenge to the device so that we can get that one running on the uh, Ambernic RG35XXH as well. All right, so here we are back on my PC. And uh, again, for TMNT Shredder's Revenge, you are gonna need some special files. And the Portmaster Wiki is gonna be extremely helpful in this case. So portmaster.games, look for the games, and we're looking for Shredder's Revenge. So here it is. Once we open that up, Shredder's Revenge gives you a little uh, information that you're gonna need. And down here under the instructions section, we have a how to install. So how to install for me, I'm using a Windows client, so I will want to open up the Windows, con uh, the Steam console, sorry. Um, so here we are, Windows R, so on my keyboard, Windows R, and it does open up my run. And then from there, you simply copy in this command, steam uh, colon slash slash open slash console, which is here. And as I open that up, it will then open up a Steam console for me. Now, if we go back into our instructions, we now have a command that we need to type in. So you can simply copy and paste this or uh, recopy it as you need to. Copy, and then down here we have our command that we're gonna input. So I've already had it input there. Uh, once I have that, just click enter, and you can see that it down begins the download process. Now this is actually pretty slow, so this is gonna take a little while to download. From here, it will continue to download until you see a message that says that it is complete. So I'll just let this download and then we'll come back in a couple minutes uh, to see what the next steps are. So here we can see that the uh, game files have finished downloading and it tells me the download is now complete and it actually gives me a nifty little path to all of the files that we're gonna need. So if I just highlight that and on my keyboard, I'm gonna hit uh, Control C here uh, so I can copy this path. You can also find it yourself. 
Um, and then I'm just gonna open up my Windows Explorer and at that point I can paste in my uh, little path here, click the enter button and drop into the files that we're gonna need. So this is gonna be the same thing as the Stardew Valley process. I'm simply gonna hit Control A on my keyboard. I am going to now copy all of these files and back on my MUOS card, go into ports, into TMNT, into game data, and again, I have a folder with some stuff already in it. I'm just going to go ahead and paste all my content here. Now, the one thing that's different about this one is that there is actually already files already here. Uh, this process has a file that is being copied as well. So when you do get to that point where it says that it's going to be uh, attempting to replace the file, do not replace it. Uh, simply keep the file that is already there and then it won't copy that file over. But once we've copied all those files over onto our SD card, we can go ahead and again, safely eject this card put it into our device and then turn it back on and it'll go through the initial boot process. So once this is done, we will uh, start up the TMNT on our device and go through that initial process. Now that we have all of our Shredder's Revenge files copied over to the SD card, again, we're back in MUOS into explore content and then ports. And when we go down to Shredder's Revenge and start it up for the first time, you'll actually be presented with a initial boot sequence. Uh, this is gonna compile all the game code. Uh, so you do wanna go through this process, pre-compile game code, just click yes. Uh, do you wanna use high com uh, quality compressions? Uh, you do wanna click yes. Do you wanna re-encode the intro movie? Uh, this one, probably yes as well. You can see it's gonna take a while. So as you go through this process, it's gonna go in and begin to compress all of these various files, change them over, compile them, do whatever magic it does in the background. This process will take quite a while. Uh, so as you're going through, uh, just put the device down, uh, walk away, um, and then uh, come back to it when it's complete. It should start it up for you. So I'm gonna let this go through that process uh, as it goes through and compiles all those files uh, and come back in a couple minutes and we'll see what it looks like once we are at uh, the end of this compile process. All right, so the process is finished doing its compiling. Uh, it probably took about 20 minutes or so, um, and it's started up the game. So you can see here that it started up the game, but unfortunately it is over in the uh, left-hand corner and all squished up. Uh, so that's easy to change. Just go into your menu. From there, just scroll down to your options. And what you wanna do is find the option for the display mode. Flip that over to, uh, I find exclusive full screen. It'll put it at a higher resolution. Uh, from there, you can go ahead, it'll save the options, and there you are, you're good to play. Uh, and that's uh, Shredder's Revenge on the RG35XXH. Some of these Portmaster games are going to need the Linux files, but if we go into the Portmaster wiki, then we will see that there are actually no instructions to tell us exactly how to download it. So Owlboy is the perfect example. Here it tells us that we need to have the Linux copy of the game, and from there we do need to copy over to the game data folder. However, it doesn't tell us how do we get the Linux copy of this game. So as a Windows PC user, I don't have a Linux installation, but it is still possible to download Linux games uh, or Linux files for the games uh, on a Windows PC. And that can be done using the Download Depot as well. So uh, when we go to, uh, how do we find the uh, Owlboy Linux version? Uh, that can be accomplished using your browser uh, to find the files that we need. We're going to go to a website called steamdb.info. Now steamdb.info gives us all the info of the various uh, Steam database information. Uh, in here at the top, what we want to do is we want to search for Owlboy. So we can pull up the information for Owlboy in our, um, in our Steam clients. Now, if we do a quick search for how do we use Download Depot, we can see here, uh, one of the first results tells us to use Download Depot, we're going to need the app ID and we are going to need the Depot ID. And both of these can be found in the steamdb.info. So under Owlboy, what we are going to need is the app ID, which is right here. And we are also going to need the uh, Depot ID. Now to find the Depot ID, if we go through the Owlboy, uh, DB info page, we can find the depots and the depot that we are looking for in this case is the Linux depot. So here is our depot ID for the Linux. So now we have the two pieces of information that we need. We do have our app ID and we also have our depot ID. So if we go back into our Steam client, 
here we are back in our uh, Steam console. And to use this, we are going to say download depot. And then we are going to need those two pieces of information that we found. We do need the app ID. And we also will need our depot ID, in this case, the Linux depot. So we are going to need this number as well. And those are the only two pieces of information that we need. So I'll go ahead and press the enter button. And from there, it's going to do the same thing as my Shredder's Revenge. So now it's gonna download the Linux version of the files for Owlboy. And then we'll go through the exact same process. Open up your, um, open up your Windows Explorer, grab the files from the a source that it tells you to and then drop those into the game data so you can do that for pretty much any of the uh, Linux uh, files that you need there may also be cases where only certain versions are compatible the same thing can be done so find the uh, specific game that you're looking for you'll look for the app ID you will need the depot ID uh, and if there is a specific version that you need, maybe it's only compatible with older versions, you go into the depots and from there, what you want to look for is manifests. Under manifests, it tells you all of the various versions that it's, down, that it's uh, created over time. So here we can see if we wanted to download a specific version that was uh, posted on May 3rd, then I can also use this manifest ID which is this one here, and that would just be another variable in our um, in our download depot command. So if we go download, oops, download depot, then we need our app ID, we need our depot ID, and then optionally the manifest ID will then give us the ability to download a very specific version of that game as well, uh, and then use those files for our uh, Portmaster games. Portmaster isn't just about running retail file games. Uh, there's also tons of ready-to-run games that are available through Portmaster. Uh, so if you wanted a game to just pick up and play, start running it without having to download or copy any additional files, simply go to the ready-to-run ports, and you can see there's tons of great options in here. Uh, there are ones that are community-made, uh, fan-made things, etc. Uh, there's also a bunch of games in here that use the shareware versions of the old games. So as an example, Descent or Devolution X, which in this case is your Diablo 1. One. Uh, so those are ready to run because it just uses the share version of the game. If you wanted to copy your own retail versions, you can also play the retail versions on there as well. And if you check out the Portmaster Wiki, it'll tell you which files it needs and how to do those. Uh, there's also Vanilla RA and TD, which is your uh, Red Alert and uh, Tiberium Dawn. Uh, those are both available as well using the shareware version. So if you wanted to play some old uh, Command & Conquer, uh, those are there as well. So I hope you liked my uh, guide on installing Portmaster games. Uh, if you did, uh, feel free to leave a like. If there's any suggestions that you wanted to see for additional guides uh, for your uh, retro handheld device, then uh, just leave some uh, comments in the uh, section below. Thanks for watching.